What happens when we take a hobby like 3D printing and then put it in the hands of people who would rather be working for themselves? People all over the world are doing exactly this, but before you get started in 3D manufacturing, we need to decide what are the best tools for the job. There's a fine line between a hobby and an investment, and to be on the right side, we need to find reliable hardware with affordable scalability. What if there was a printer that fit this role near perfectly? Let's take a look at the Adventure 5M series from Flashforge and see how it stacks up. The Adventure 5M series comes in two variants of printers, the 5M and the 5M Pro. If you're strictly interested in the hardware and feature set of these 3D printers, I'll be doing a complete breakdown in another video. Now, it's really easy to fall into the hobbyist trap where we view printers quite differently than an investor would view them. We want all the bells and whistles and all the latest and greatest additions and a machine that just does everything. But what if we can have a little bit of both? The Adventure 5M series from Flashforge punches far outside of its price point with both quality and reliability, directly competing with printers that are in the $1,200 to $1,500 price bracket. And this, all without even considering the bulk pricing Flashforge has set up for 3D manufacturers. If we base our investment decision off a of price per unit analysis, Flashforge is nearly impossible to compete with. But what about the rest of the requirements for 3D manufacturing? Does this affordable scalability come at a cost? First up, let's look at the quality of 3D prints we can expect if we decide to make an investment into Flashforge. Almost anybody who has ever used these machines would tell you that once again, Flashforge is punching far outside of its price point, with this quality directly competing with machines that are four to eight times more expensive. Even when using the default profiles and without any real tweaking, it's hard to complain about the quality that you achieve directly out of the box from Flashforge. So far, I've experienced near perfect print quality out of the box, but with a little bit of tweaking to the filament profile, things only get better. And everything I'm gonna show you today has been done using zero tweaking and printed using the default profiles. And with everything we're seeing, it would be really hard for somebody to say that this quality doesn't directly compete with top brands and manufacturers. Almost anybody can win a race once, but can Flashforge do it reliably? Very few people have tortured and abused the 85M series to the level of which I've abused it. And I could safely say that reliability isn't an issue when it comes to these printers. Even when I give these machines the worst that I can give them, they continue to deliver high quality products when most machines would have simply given up. At 6,000 hours of print time, this machine has been through the worst of the worst, and I have definitely abused it. And even today with minimal maintenance, I'm experiencing the same print quality as the day it was unboxed. One requirement we need to talk about is the available build space. And the available build space for these units is 220 by 220 cubed. For myself, this isn't really a problem. The majority of all my prints use up very small footprint on the build surface. But if you're printing something like larger helmets or armor pieces, or just simply larger prints, then you might want to look elsewhere than the Adventure 5M series. If you're not looking to do larger prints, then the smaller footprint of these printers becomes a benefit. And the smaller footprint equals more printers on a print rack and more products being printed. You see, investing is a game and min-maxing is the play. What is the minimum amount that we can input while maximizing our output? Now, my job is to make the best videos and content that I can make. So maybe you shouldn't trust me. But one thing we can trust is the money. So ask yourself, why is one of the largest 3D print farms in the world heavily and rapidly integrating Flashforge into their operation? Anyone can invest in an operation and fail. But when you see a company take their profits and reinvest into scale to produce more volume, then it's time to pay attention. And that's exactly what's going on here. This company has found out that Flashforge is the best investment when looking to scale their operations. With a strong multi-printer dashboard and power loss recovery, Flashforge offers a strong feature set for print farm management and investment loss protection. Combining this with quality hardware and affordable scalability, and it's really easy to see why businesses are choosing Flashforge for high volume printing. Quality and the return on your investment is just one part of the picture. So we need to talk about something that is really hard for consumers to see. In the world of mass manufacturing, the nails in a company's coffin is not the ratio between price and feature set, 
but rather quality control. The reason most consumers can never truly verify good quality control is because of sample size. Sample size is directly the reason why you could buy a 3D printer and absolutely love it. But then your friend buy the same 3D printer off of your recommendation and absolutely hate it. But this is where Flash Forge is completely in a game of their own. For myself, I'm in an interesting position where I have experienced enough sample size where I can have a good idea for a company's quality control. You see, last year I reached out to a well-known brand and manufacturer and placed an order for eight identically matching 3D printers. Out of eight machines, one of them came without massive quality control issues. Quality control issues that required hardware modifications just to meet the expected operation of the machines. But out of a matching sample size, every single Flash Forge I have pulled out of a box has met in both expectations and quality control. The difference is other brands and manufacturers can get away with the sample size trick where Flash Forge cannot. You see, Flash Forge primarily isn't a consumer brand. Most of their early customers are commercial customers. If you look at their product offerings, you'll see that unlike other manufacturers, Flashforge is heavily in the industrial space. And one thing you know about business is poor quality control simply doesn't work. Now, with every mass manufactured product, there's always going to be an issue that somebody is going to run into. But when comparing Flashforge to other mass manufactured 3D printers, the likelihood that you would run into these issues is incredibly lower. Real quick side note here, the issue I just described with low sample size and limited testing time is the exact reason why you should always take anything a content creator says with a little bit of skepticism. This isn't just a negative blanket statement towards content creators. This goes for myself as well. I've reviewed hardware in the past where my initial excitement for those reviews and for that hardware has faded over time the more I've gotten to know the hardware or the product. Always, always verify. Sample size is everything. If a new product is coming out, make sure you check with several people before you decide to make a purchasing decision. Now, you may have noticed that through this video, I haven't really talked about the different features and options for these 3D printers. We're gonna be doing that in another video with a complete breakdown of the entire feature set and the differences between the 5M in the 5M Pro. But let me explain. These videos aren't just one-off reviews with limited testing time. I've been using the 5M and the 5M Pro since their initial launch, and there are some very good reasons why I believe the things that I'm saying. I'm deeply involved in the 3D printing community and the FlashForge community as a whole. And I'm very aware of the way hobbyists view 3D printers versus the way investors view making an investment. Let me remind you that the majority of consumers are feature focused and they're focusing on the race for manufacturers and brands to adopt and add more features. And nobody can really blame you for wanting to chase a feature set. If you're sitting at home and you're a consumer, of course you're going to want one machine that does as much as it can. But investors are totally different. Investors want quality hardware that can do a task over and over again reliably. They're not interested in chasing the feature set and the marketing campaigns of different brands and manufacturers. The world of consumers versus investors couldn't be more different. To the point, if one of these machines was to go down or require extensive maintenance, most investors would simply throw that machine away and purchase a new one because they know that time tinkering is time losing money. For those of us looking to make the step from consumer to investor, it's really important that we take the time to address our motivations and our strategies because there are some honest differences that simply don't translate from one to the other. Personally, for myself, the option couldn't be more clear, as the Adventure 5M series fits everything that I'm looking for. When placed in a print farm environment, it's really hard to argue with FlashForge's approach towards the design and execution of these 3D printers. Not only am I a fan of its simplified design and ease of use, but I'm a huge fan of the tighter, smaller footprint. This means more printers on the rack producing products. Whether you're looking to step into the world of 3D manufacturing or looking to scale an existing operation, do yourself a favor and check out FlashForge with the Adventure 5M series. The bulk pricing for print farm operations alone makes this a deal that's really, really hard to ignore. If you want to get a hint for the reliability of these printers, why don't you check out this video where I completely abuse the Adventure 5M and it still kept printing without issue. 
This is easily the most absurd video that I've ever done, and a perfect example of exactly how reliable these printers really are. 